to game two between Mihalic and Grast. Upper left hand corner, we have Mihalic starting as the white Terran. Upper right hand corner, we have Grast as the black Protoss, which I suppose makes this the uh, Goth cast. We've got. It's, I don't know that it's going to be difficult to differentiate. It's, you know, the white versus black, or maybe it's the black and white cast. Go. Grass being very, very manner. The good luck, good luck. This is on Shakur's Plateau, which tends to be more of a macro oriented map. And if Mialich does similar action game one that he, or game two that he did game one, we'll see if Grass can push it back. I feel like Grass was in an okay economic position, but just didn't have. Yeah, wasn't able to engage with his Dragoons. He saw the army there as well, and just, yeah, didn't adjust to the really strong timing attack from Mihalich. Mihalich just running him over, basically. A-moving. It's like the equivalent of Gateway Man for Protoss. It's Factory Man for, for Terran. So, yeah. Ex excuse me, executing at the 9-minute mark. I am curious, since this is a larger, more macro map, and I think it's Loser's Pick... As far as who decides map, I'm, I'm wondering if Grass is saying like, okay, maybe, maybe I can try this again, and just be prepared this time, or if we're going to see more or less the exact same action from Mihalich on this map. It is a four-player map, which provides a little bit more uh, room for error, because, well, I'm not sure how I would want to put this. I feel like it has more variety <laughs> when you have a four-player map. When you have a two-player map, there's just limits on what you can execute. This is kind of more like, I don't know, the standard bread and butter interesting StarCraft. It looks like, at least for Grast, he's going to get that initial scout. Not sure what I'm saying. I didn't get the best sleep last night. I think that's what that comment's coming from. Like, it's the scatterbrain. Upper left-hand corner, scout here for Grast. He's going to be able to sneak in. Check the barracks being built. We do see in, not a front door seal this time for Mialic. She's going to go for that barracks alongside that supply depot. To try to block any zealots out. Are we going to see initial zealot with that scout? Looks like we are are going to see initial zealot and cybernetic score alongside. The assimilator is already up, but no probes are wandering into it just yet. Now moving across. Fortunately, Mihalic with that early did guess right. So you know when there's a probe in your base, it's not a cross position scout. And so it's kind of a 50-50 shot from there. He's already building a supply depot at his natural expansion. Interesting. Very brave. Uh, first marine is out. Is building a second marine. Right off the bat, and that's yeah. Perhaps he's like, okay, well, I know this zealot's coming and what timing it's coming, so and I feel confident, perhaps fighting it off, building a bunker immediately to follow it up. So this is also a larger map. It's kind of the other aspect of it, but yeah, I'm a little surprised by this. Going ahead and grabbing that bunker, going on the low ground. We'll see if the zealot. I do believe this is a large enough. This is actually good play for me, Elish, because I believe this is a large enough gap where the Zealots can't just do a run-by and get into the main. If they could, that would be really frustrating and disastrous. Range upgrading, Dragoon being produced. Also, this is like a wide enough uh, location that, yeah, it takes a while for the Zealots to get out there. So, not something I'm used to seeing. Just like aggressively, let's get that bunker down there. Um, barracks floating with three Marines out there to go ahead and provide that front door seal. It's going to allow Mihalich to feel a little bit more comfortable taking that natural expansion sooner rather than later. Missed the SCV exploding at the natural expansion. Dragoon going ahead and popping that out. Grast setting up as though he wants to play more of a long-term economic game. And this time, yeah, Mihalich, uh, with that initial SCV scouting information, feeling very comfortable just grabbing that command center on the ground. Zealot there stalwartly watching for any additional scouts that might pop out. And interestingly enough, it looks like another probe. Is this going to try to sneak a, a sneaky snake third, or is, are we going to see proxy tech? Probe still wandering out towards that bottom right-hand base. Towards the bottom middle. Kind of curious what that action's about. Still sitting on one gateway. Nexus warping in. The Dragoon with range upgrading. Now trying to sneak around the corner. Looks like they are able to sneak that gap. The Marine's flooding out. So take, ignore my earlier comment. One Marine already down. Second Marine on, on danger of being hit. And this is going to be dangerous for Mihal Itch because this is where his Marines need to produce. And they have to walk across that Zealot and that Dragoon. No factory, or sorry, one factory is building a Vulture to start. A Vulture is not the best defense against this. So that's definitely delaying that command center. SEVs are going to be able to take that Dragoon out. So nice defense there. And with that, nice. That was a very calm response from Mihal Itch considering what looked to be a disastrous opener. So that's only going to delay his command center a little bit, where that could have been a lot of trouble. 
Fortunately for him, it looked like Grass wanted to sneak a Nexus, a quick third Nexus here at the 6 o'clock location, rather than applying additional pressure. So he's going for a very fast three bases, so he's going kind of, I'm going to call this economic cheese, to be honest. Mihalic is getting Siege Tech and a Siege Tank. I think he was hoping to get a Vulture early and maybe some Vulture Speed uh, or Vulture Mines and then Vulture Speed to go ahead and provide some harassment right off the bat, assuming that Grass was going for, again, you know, quick Nexus, more economic play. But with that run by, kind of spooking him a little bit, so he's moving back more towards that Siege Tech uh, style play. He is getting that Armory, which suggests we're going to see more of kind of that slow, probably a second factory in not too long, but more of that upgrade-based uh, timing play. Refinery opening up. We do have a single Vulture starting to wander out. A Dragoon blocking the ramp. Natural expansion very exposed. So might be able to get a kill on these probes or two before these Dragoons are able to respond. Wandering up now. And it, this has to be a big, big, big indicator. Wow, probe's coming offline. Did the probe get the kill? I think the probe got the kill. Yeah, let's find the hero probe. Where is he? Come on. They're all stacked on one another, so I'm going to have to wait. Got to give him his due. There he is. The hero even dropping the assimilator in triumph. Way to go, probe. Two siege tanks on the front here. We do see uh, Mielich setting up to go ahead and grab his second factory. He does have level one weapons along the way. Now the question is, is does he just set up for two base? This is Shakuras Plateau where you have that nearby third. In long-term PVT matches, oftentimes, we already see uh, Dark Templar actually being produced. I think this is gonna be a Dark Templar drop. We have the robotics facility along the corner. There's the Templar archives that was kind of snuck out. So maybe trying to do, wants to try to sneak couple DT in, do some economic damage that way across to drop. I don't see an engineering bay. We do have a, a commsat station. I'm going to go ahead and oops, switch that vision so we can go ahead and see what ends up getting scanned initially. So commsat station up on both ends. It looks like the commsat's actually being saved rather than going for the tech here for Mihalich. So pausing there. Dark Templar moving out and that actually is going to end up paying off for him because as the DT is making its way across he will have at least two scans to go ahead and repel this. However, if it waits for that shuttle, you can always just pick that DT back up and with no anti-air, ends up being very, very frustrating. A starport plopping down, so maybe there's a wraith to fight this off. There are some Goliaths. Okay, there's there's the compsat. It looks like it got a good, and I switched the wrong player. Uh, not my best commentary this, this time. Um, Clicked the wrong player, so didn't get a good look. I think he got a good look at the uh, a ping here. Probably saw the gateways. Probably saw the robotics facility. I don't know that he knows about the DTs. Four Goliaths to go ahead and fight back a shuttle. Plus Charm Boosters really wants to make sure that he's going to be able to push any sort. I think he's expecting more of a Reaver harass, but I don't know how successful this is going to be at repelling these DTs. And in the meantime, the 6 o'clock base is up and mining for grass, so he is sitting... Kind of in that nice economic position. But will this shuttle be able to drop these DTs before these Goliaths pick it off? And how long will these DTs survive underneath uh, threat of scan? Science facility on the way as well. This is a very... I feel like this is a very late DT drop is another aspect of this. But still might be able to get a lot of damage done. DTs moving in now. Goliaths doing the damage. One Dark Templar down. Two Dark Templar. Only two make it out. Sorry, three make it out. Initial commsat, they're not able, they're running out of commsat range. They are able to get out of commsat range, but there's the second commsat. Looks like it's going to be able to catch one of the Dark Templar, but at least, did it, did it get the second? No, not the other two. Third commsat, this DT trying to run to the SCV line. Looks like it is going to be able to escape, and there's a lack of detection, at least for a period of time. Wasn't able to stop level one weapons, trying to work on that armory. There's already a second armory being built. Unfortunately, there's no active upgrade happening here. The other DT now trying to wander up. It looks like it's going to be able to get an SCV kill. So a little bit of disruption. Not a huge kill on Mialich. This is more annoying than anything. There's a commsat able to kill one of the one of the Dark Templar here. So able to at least pick off an armory. So that's some economic damage. And there that last DT picked off. Unfortunately, so a, actually decent harass by Grast as far as execution. But really not getting much outside of the armory, and there wasn't an active upgrade, so it really didn't punish Miholich all that much, unfortunately for him. In the meantime, he's got a decent Dragoon Force here in the background. I'm curious if he's going to make his way towards Arbiter Tech sooner rather than later. That tends to be very effective on this map. Four gateways, or, uh, sorry, four gateways to the north, four gateways to the south. That's eight gateways total. Looking for a Stargate to follow this up. Miholich 
looking for level one weapons. And this is kind of the trick of current PVT is usually the level two weapons, level one armor attack is just really strong, difficult to deal with. So you need, in my opinion, either an economic advantage where you're just out producing them and just smashing it before it even starts moving out, or you need arbiters and lots of energy behind them. So you're hitting those stasises, stasi, what's the plural of stasises, something along those lines to pick it off. Um, the one advantage of ticking that army is, is that he's going to slow down that level one armor, but really I feel like it's the level, it's the level two weapons. That's more the, the powerful point of that attack. Mines being upgraded. It looks like we have science vessel out just in case more DTs, some Goliath still kind of patrolling along that corner. Six o'clock base. That third gas is not yet taken, but that forge is working on level one weapons. Looks like grass is actually thinking about taking a fourth base, which I feel like is a very dangerous timing to, to try to take it because he's going to grab this fourth base potentially as Mihalic is thinking about going ahead and uh, starting to press out and do some damage. We do have two groupings. I think this is about two control groups of units as Mihalic is moving out. It looks like he's going a little bit early. So going before level two weapons comes along the line, he's just going to try to hit the 11 minute mark with the level one, with the level one weapons. I think that's going to give a better window for Grast. He is, he's about even in supply, which is not exactly where you want to be comparatively, but he does have some tools if he can micro his way and kind of engage on these ramps, might be able to fight this off. I don't see another shuttle to do any sort of zealot bomb, so he's going to have to get it done on the ground. Sweeping around, coming from actually a back end, so maybe he's thinking about a backstab, checking towards that third, maybe he's just checking to make sure that base is in fact taken, now has observers on Mihalic with that forward position. Mihalic uh, now grouping up, it looks like he's just Looks like rather than pushing with his army, he just wanted it kind of out in a, a forward slot, perhaps to try to convey that, hey, maybe I'm going for a third at this stage. Maybe throw Grast off a little bit. Maybe try to encourage him to plop down an additional Nexus. Rather than building the additional troops, he is, in fact, dropping that Nexus in that bottom right-hand corner. Thinking that Mielhalic is going for more of a long-term economic play. But in the meantime, Science Vessel's out. We've got two machine shops producing siege tanks, and we've got the four factories behind that producing the vultures. Level two weapons is going to trigger momentarily, and I think that is going to be the moment where we're going to steal, see uh, Mihalic started to push out. He's also got EMP working in the background, and this is another danger, yeah, this is another dangerous situation for Grass. He's behind in supply. He didn't have the troops engaged, does have the Zelts moving forward on top of those siege tanks, might be able to get something done. Unfortunately, there looks like a lot of them wandering up to engage those vultures. At least the initial front line of those siege tanks are exposed and getting wiped out. So Grass getting some nice concavity, some good defense. It looks like there is... These tanks are unseaged, but there's a defense matrix down on them. It looks like the Dragoon's starting to press into this. Level 1 armor is coming online for Mihalic now. He's trying to continue with this attack. The Dragoon's still standing. The Zealot's being dropped off to go ahead and engage those siege tanks behind. So Grass needs to keep up with his macro as far as a follow-up attack to stop this push. Mihalic continuing to press forward. That's three siege tanks, and it looks like six vultures remaining. He's going to go ahead... And Siege momentarily while he groups up and probably waits for another round of Siege tanks. Grast is producing additional units here. Keep in mind he's got to still do it from the ground and pound though. Because I don't see any higher tier tech. Goliath starting to move forward. They're going to pick off some of these observers. So Mihalic regrouping is a huge with that turnaround. He is a huge supply lead now. Enough that he probably could go push into the natural expansion to go ahead and box Grass in at the very least. If not end the game right now. There's the Stargate but it is... Uh, quiet at this stage so now he has that weapons upgrade has some additional siege tanks and he's got to feel confident with the six siege tanks to press forward again he is hesitating a little bit doing a little bit of scans grass transferring some probes to that bottom right hand base does not have much of an attack force to defend this he has managed to get level one weapons but right now Mihalic, if he just sits back and lets this happen he's going to allow grass to more or less comprise an army and end up with a, an overall economic lead, because this is going to be four Nexus, <laughs> four Nexi, that are up, and that can turn around into an economic advantage the longer this goes on. Still a 20 supply lead from Mihalic, still a very dangerous army. I don't see, honestly, I don't feel like this is enough to stop it, unless it gets a really nice engage. And Mihalic uh, just kind of waiting to pull the trigger, but the longer he's waiting, the longer he's waiting for Grass to basically rebuild here. I'm actually surprised he did not capitalize on a wiped out Protoss army. Arbiter might be part of this attack force as well. We do have a High Templar. Uh, Storm is upgrading. We also have Stasis. I don't think there's going to be enough energy in an Arbiter to really get any sort of execution out. Now Mihalic going ahead and pressing forward. 
But as that's happened, he's still maintained a 20 supply lead, but Grast has a little bit more tech to go ahead and deal with this, particularly in the form of Psystorm. And Psystorm can really be a big difference in these engagements. The Vulture's pressing forward this time a little bit too far forward. It looks like that Siege, or sorry, that Psystorm hitting mostly Vultures there. And that High Temple are going to get picked off otherwise. So a lot of that buffer force kind of peeled off, and Mihalic now pressing forward. This army's trying to filter down to the south, lead it away from that natural expansion, perhaps create a vector where reinforcements may be able to push. A Dragoon trying to go for a Mind Dragon, fortunately Mind Dragon the wrong direction. A single Goliath wandering a little bit forward. Now Mihalic is like, okay, you're going to give me that territory. I'm going to go ahead and push forward uh, across that, that edge. The Observer's moving in. That's going to allow some mines to be cleared, but I don't think Grast has enough. Another side storm catching mostly Vultures again. That Arbiter's going to have to back off and wait a while before it's able to execute a stasis, but before it could even do that, there's a nice EMP, and it looks like Mihalic, I believe, has done it again. The Dragoon's trying to peel in from behind. These tanks remaining unseaged. They do have significant upgrades, and actually, without being sieged, not capitalizing on Grasp in really kind of a, a little box location. I don't know that it's going to make much of a difference because Grasp's army is having some trouble making its way through as well. A nice defensive matrix pushing through. The Dragoon's still trying to work on these siege tanks from behind. It looks like just through sheer overwhelming numbers and unseaged tanks, these Dragoons are going to be able to press through that back line, and Grass army is going to be able to get cleared up. So now Grass is sitting at four bases. Vultures are at the natural expansion, but they should be cleared out through reinforcements. And Dragoon's on the ground momentarily. So if Grass can go ahead and just keep up with his macro, he should be okay in this and actually pull significantly ahead. He's got a bunch of minerals in his bank. He just needs to spend it. Just needs to spend it. Some Zealots moving across the line, trying to get a Mind Drag, not getting the Mind Drag app. Four more Siege Tanks from Mihalic, starting to push in the natural expansion. However, keep in mind, this is a lot of gateways producing here in that back corner. So Grass still might be able to mount the defense. Currently, though, he's not getting the macro done to make that happen. He's still floating 2k minerals and 900 gas and is 15 supply down. Mihalic pounding away at that natural expansion. That natural expansion looks like it is going to uh, be taken out. And Mihalic, at least in the natural expansion, the game's still not over, though. Keep in mind, because this is still three base. Mihalic has managed to somehow, and it looks like I missed maybe a counterattack here at the 1 o'clock. Uh, Mihalic, or probably a DT up there. Sorry if I missed a lot of that action uh, while that was happening. But Mihalic going ahead and establishing that. So now, all of a sudden, Mihalic in great shape. He can just go ahead and back up, go for a contain. <clears throat> looks like he's actually, so rather than containing... He's going to go ahead and dive in and just... Pa I don't know that he needed to absolutely unseage everything. I feel like this is giving Grass an opportunity to sneak back and pounce on unseaged tanks once again. Yeah, one tank taken out from the back end. It looks like the Arbiter getting EMP'd, so it's not going to be able to land a stasis. So not going to be able to save this Nexus. But the Dragoon's peeling across. Reinforcements from Mielich, uh pressing across. They don't have the Arbiter to support. The Arbiter... Allowing those Dragoons to be cloaked and maybe get a handful of free hits. That shuttle just wandering around with a single Zealot. Not providing support. Now Mihalic, like just wandering that attack troop back. Okay, now the Science Vessel is a little bit uh, pushed off. I'm waiting for him to just siege up and provide a contain here. But he keeps moving the entirety of his army. He has taken out that 3 o'clock base. Grass sitting as though he wants to take another base. But as he's peeling away from these bases and not going for this contain, this is again giving opportunities for Grass to sit on, what is this, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 gateways and continue producing out of those locations and peel out and perhaps engage at another time. Uh, three more gateways. So we, we got a lot of gateway production. Grass still has an okay economy at this stage. He is mined out at his main and his natural expansion. Still running off two bases, but not for long. Mihalic getting in the bottom right-hand corner. I feel like this is the nail in the coffin now. So this is going to be all of these probes massacred. Six o'clock location should be cleaned up uh, in not too long. Now Grass going for a counterattack while Mihalic's army is out of position. Wanting to go ahead and perhaps take out that 12 o'clock base, put, in Gra uh, put Mihalic in a defensive situation. He's playing refugee toss at this stage. That mine dragging forever... Catching some SEVs with it, so I guess positive win there for Grass. That army retreating with those siege tanks to go ahead and engage this. That command center might get taken out in the meantime, but at the very least, this is some economic disruption at the 12 o'clock base. So it's tit for tat economically. Mielich still can... His main is mined out, his natural expansion is mined out. That was his one mining base. So it's one, one mining base here, and he's going to lose that command center. So one mining base both for both players... 
or sorry, one mining base for grass. Great stasis. So it's going to be just be troops on the ground to try to, to fight things for both players, it looks like. Some siege tanks and vultures making their way to the 6 o'clock to wipe out this mining base. So it's anybody's game here at this stage. Some distance mining SCVs, but there are two Dragoons to do something right there. It looks like the rest of those Dragoons getting wiped out from these unseached tanks engaging underneath the, the Arbiter's retreating, which I believe is wise. So Mielich maybe has an opportunity to go ahead and reestablish something. He has wiped out, it looks like, all the probes here at the 6 o'clock. There's another round of troops moving up for grass. 106 supply versus 73, and I think that's what it's going to be for potentially the remainder of the game. The Zelt's trying to get on top of those siege tanks as they unstasis, and they successfully do so, pecking away a defensive matrix to try to keep them alive. Keep in mind, Mielich is not mining, so he needs to keep these units alive, and this might be what gives Grass the game. He still has those units at the 6 o'clock and that bottom right in corner to peel back to try to provide some defense and pull this game out. But right now, right now between the stasis and everything else, it looks like Grass is still picking away at units. But there's GG from Grass, realizing that was all he had. There were still more units to, to be pulled back to engage in this. And an exciting ender, Mielich pulls it out by just being able to mine at a distance. And so Mielich will advance to the winner's bracket. Grass will proceed to the loser's bracket. And we will go to the other side of the bracket altogether to watch Exit take on Nooks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.